This programme was first broadcast on Canterbury's community access radio station Plains FM 96.9 and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. It's time for Emergence News on Plains FM 96.9, Citizen Made Radio. Tēnā koutou and greetings to all from Emergence News here at Plains FM in the Garden City of Christchurch, otherwise known as Ōtotahi, Aotearoa, New Zealand. We are of course are in the Southern Hemisphere and so we're in the middle of our winter. We are fortunate that for, the, for a few weeks now we've been able to go about our daily lives with no restrictions on our movements and with a relative degree of security, that we will not get sick if we attend social gatherings. We know that this is not the case for many of you who are listening from overseas. Kyakaha Koto, may you all stay strong and keep well. Our purpose here at Emergence News is to keep telling the story about the physical advent of a group of beings who are here helping, guiding and inspiring us during these difficult and challenging times. Known as the Great White Lodge, their members include those who are often called the Laws of Compassion or the Masters of Wisdom. They have lived the lives we are living now, struggled through all the lessons and challenges that this earth life gives us, and emerged from it with a mastery of themselves and the energetic forces of this reality. Many who achieve this go on to greater learning, mastering planetary and cosmic forces. But these masters have made the great sacrifice of staying with us, their younger brothers and sisters, to help us to become masters of ourselves. At the head of this group is the master of all masters, the great Lord of Love, Maitreya. He is the world teacher for this time and embodies the Christ energy. He is the expected one prophesied by many of the major religions who expect the second coming of their particular deity. In the April edition of Share International, we have a report from Israel today of a highly revered rabbi, Chaim Kaniski, that the Messiah is here. He states that not only is he here amongst us, but that he himself has been having meetings with him. We'll talk about this more in, later in the program. Also today, we're talking about the group of New World Servers who have and are incarnating on Earth at this time with the sole purpose to serve the plan of God and bring the new age of Aquarian energies. They are all ages, all genders, comes from all walks of life, they might be members of different religious groups, but their true allegiance is to their own souls. They come from different nations and cultural backgrounds, but they serve the world first. They are truly representative of humanity as a whole. Their only creed is the love of humanity and their desire to serve the greater good. They do not necessarily know each other, but can recognize a fellow server through the similarity of vibration and the inclusiveness that they demonstrate in all their actions. They are the intermediaries between humanity and hierarchy, the inner government of our planet. From their ranks will be drawn those who will become the future governing body of this planet, thus releasing the present masters to even greater expansions of consciousness. So here in the studio today, we've got John and Peter. Hello, Hi there, Shafir. Always nice to be with you guys. What are you gonna be talking about today? Well, John, you tell us first. Okay, um, I've been tasked by Shafia to <laughs> go and have a look around the topic of new group of world servers. So I have fossicked around and come up with some stuff. Great. Good one. Yes, and I too have uh, looked at one or two examples of um, various uh, people around that uh, demonstrating that sort of ability. Oh, great. Mm. Look forward to it. So, this is exciting news, isn't it, about this rabbi? It's what do you think exciting. about it? Well, it's interesting because they have such standing in their community. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned earlier that it's a brave thing to say. Yes, it is, isn't it? To put the, your head above the parapet. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And I guess also that when Jesus appeared in Palestine, yeah. Judaism said he wasn't the Messiah. Yeah. So... 
maybe they're patting themselves on the back and saying, we waited long enough to get the real thing. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it would be interesting to hear what they're saying. It, it will be to interesting. Be yeah, yes, and interesting to see the um, how the... Um, so-called Zionists take on this thing because they've claimed to be Jewish but uh, don't demonstrate any of the religious side of Judaism, do they? And is it the same group of rabbis that have been critical of modern Israel? Yes, probably it is because they're um, the, you know, the really the uh, ultra Orthodox, aren't yes, they? they are. Yeah. So yeah. they are the religious, um, the religious people of the religious of, group of the Jewish watching people, the political yeah. group. That's right, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And uh, yes, they're um, they're not too proud of some of their activities of mm. the, the so-called Zionists. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, apparently these um, the other rabbis have been saying, telling their people to you know to prepare to study to you mm. know that it's happening soon, and mm. and it certainly would seem like in the world, wouldn't it, that you know we're, we're, all the things we've talked about over the years that we're coming to that point of of tension where you know something's got to change. Certainly, the tension. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, John, so you're going to talk to us a little bit about this world service. Yes, well, it's been very interesting. And as I said earlier, I started fossicking King around. I got into the uh, Share International website. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, our absent fourth, Nigel, and we should probably have a moment silence for Nigel, yes. uh, which was just edited out by our producer, Laura. Thank you very much. Um, he sent me a very interesting quote out of a book by Foster Bailey. Now, the book is called Changing Esoteric Values. Foster Bailey is the, was the husband of Alice A. Bailey. Mm -hmm. Changing Esoteric Values, published by Lucius Trust. And here's the quote, and it's going to kick off my exploration of this new group of world servers. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Spiritual factors of value to esotericists today are included here with clarity and vision. Esotericism is shown as a practical science of service in which the subjective and spiritual aspects of life can be related to human need and world affairs in effective ways. The old tendency in spiritually awakening people toward isolation from mundane daily life and to dependence on a so-called spiritual authority is ending. The esotericist is also a man of goodwill and a member of the new group of world servers, responsible for the well-being of the human race in conformity with the divine plan. He learns and grows through the results of his own experience in relating spiritual principles to daily life. Mm -hmm. Really interesting take. So I followed this link, went back into the Share International website, and Benjamin cream has been asked a lot of questions about this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And he's asked, are they more sensitive to the energy of the avatar of synthesis? BC replies, Benjamin Croom replies. So before you go there, who's the avatar of synthesis? Well, maybe we could come back to that because okay. that is a very big topic. Yes. <laughs> so BC has said when Christ, um, when he came before in Palestine, the Christ found there were not enough servers, disciples in the world through whom he could work who could have prepared the way for him and through whom he could construct the new civilization at the time. So in 1922, Maitreya therefore inaugurated this group of new world servers, which is the most important group existing in the world, although it has no outer form or organization. Each member of it is related subjectively, i.e. on the inner soul level, to hierarchy. They know and understand the plan or their part in it. On the outer plane, there are two groups, one large group, unaware of their subjective link with hierarchy and working only under impressions from masters. The other small inner nucleus, which works consciously on the outer plane under the direct supervision of the masters. Krem goes on to tell us this group is made up of men and women of all levels of society, members in every country without exception. And apart from the war years, have been promoting the principles of right relationship, sharing and justice. Krem tells us they are to be found in educational, political, economic and scientific fields. He calls them the forerunner of the Christ, the vanguard, sent ahead to prepare the way. From their understanding of their plan, from their altruistic love and humanity, from their desire to serve, 
They are the guarantee of the correct working out of the plan of hierarchy of which they are also part. It's a really interesting concept that he's saying that they go out into the community, some consciously, some unconsciously doing this. Mm. He goes on to say that some are fairly advanced indeed and work directly with the masters, but he also says the majority have never heard of the masters and work under the filtered down inspiration. And we've talked before about the initiate who doesn't know they're an initiate and who's doing the work in spite of the, yeah. everything else around it. It's, and the quote I thought was interesting is you don't have to know you're a spiritual to be spiritual. No. no. And so there are many people that you and I know who are behaving in what we would define as a spiritual manner but would not consider themselves spiritual people. That's right. Mm. And this is, this is what Krem is saying. He's gone on to say, according to my master, the people of the world can be divided into two kinds, and this is written in 1998, those who compete and those who cooperate. Benjamin Krem said, that's an extraordinary statement. It seems to me to be the crucial statement about our time and an extraordinary measure of the state of play in the world. Two great forces exist today. The reactionaries looking backward because they love the past, grimly holding on to the old, the useless, that is which breaking down, falling apart. And those who see the only way forward is through cooperation, who come into incarnation ready to cooperate because they are disciples and initiates. It is in the hands of these disciples and initiates who make up the new group of world servers that the future of the world depends. So this group are incarnating with certain qualities. Mm -hmm. They may be working directly or indirectly, but they are here for this role. So the, one of the main qualities is inclusiveness, isn't it? Inclusiveness, yes. Yes. that ability to cooperate mm. and that ability to uh, intrinsically know some, some human values around sharing, around justice, around cooperation. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think also to see the bigger picture, you know, they have yeah. the ability to see that it's not a matter of just working for your own particular group or your yeah. own particular group. Yes, yep. it's not whether you it's, push your ideas forward, it's the overall look of right. the whole. And yes. it's that decentralisation, isn't yeah. it? It's, that, mm. it's less of me, me, me and more of uh, uh, how can we, how can we do things. Yes, it's the Aquarian area. And, yes. And we want to do the thing for the best for the group. You yes, know, in fact, Peter, the... you could tie that to the Aquarian value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that the values of this group of world servers. That's he right. goes on to say, he goes back to the great avatar of synthesis, which has been invoked by hierarchy, standing behind and working through the Christ. He says the group through whom it works most potently is the new group of world servers. They are the link between hierarchy and humanity because they have a foot in both camps. They are all of them disciples. They will have taken the first and perhaps the second, some of them the third and a few the fourth initiation. They are world servers. They are not necessarily the esotericists of the world, but are in every single human department. In every field they are giving expression to their sense of humanity's needs in this time of transition. They are the hope of the world. Now we talked a while ago actually when we were planning this program over what level of initiation they would have to be. Mm -hmm. And Krem is saying they will have taken the first and perhaps the second. Yes. Well, I think the first definitely because that is the opening of the Christ in a centre in your heart, right. isn't it? And that's yeah. where your, your love element comes from, your yeah. love for humanity. And yeah. So that's, yeah. And also you're, you're managing your physical desire. Yeah. Uh, yes. Maybe you're coming to grips with your emotional mm -hmm. uh, nature. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're able to express some uh, non-personal uh, beliefs and issues. So really interesting look at that group, that new group of world servers. Well, um, I've been tasked with finding one or two of our, these people that we know, and um, the first one actually came to mind was uh, Nurse Maud, an example of an early person of the Group of the World Service. She dedicated her life to helping those needing help. She was actually a nun in the church, but she was a nurse as well. And um, we see her organisation all around Christchurch, mm -hmm. don't we? We see the little cars Constantly. whizzing around. Constantly, yeah. And yes. 
anyone in Christchurch um, can get their help when they need it uh, as they retire and as they get older and that sort of thing. It's a really good point, Peter. There wouldn't be yeah. too many people in Christchurch that wouldn't have heard of, of Nurse Maud. Maud. Yeah. That's mm. right. I mean, when my wife was dying, they were there every day to give mm. her a shower and that mm. sort of thing. Fantastic service. Mm. Yes. You know. And I'm sure there's one of Nurse Maud in every city in the world you know mm. that yes you know, there will be yes, you know whatever yeah. their local uh, yeah. hero yeah. heroine is mm. yeah and uh, you know we need to acknowledge those uh, amazing people and that sort of thing and did you say she just started off as a nun doing it by herself yes well i mean she was initially and then she very got various helpers to yeah. help with us uh, and got other people involved and uh, yeah and then just know, gradually grew uh, yes. but never sought for you know fame or recognition mm -hmm. no. and uh, you know is it truly a, a server and um, working beyond her the personality needs sort of thing yeah. you know yeah so uh, I thought well she was a really good example of that sort of thing and actually if you look at the way that um, our social welfare system has developed there's been people behind that all the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also from our political point of view from you know giving the vote to women and that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, in many respects new zealand has sort of been right there in the forefront and mm -hmm. you know on, on occasions hasn't it yes and, yes and um our social s welfare system to me is um maybe not a world beater but it's certainly up there with um the social welfare systems of and could honestly shine a light to many of the countries around the world. It's a really good point, Peter. It has survived in this country a succession of neoconservative liberal governments yeah. that mm -hmm. have tried and tried and tried to chew it away. That's right. Yes, yeah, to cut the funds to yeah. do this sort of thing. And it has retained a yes. degree of its of its effectiveness. Oh, yes. It's, you know, to me, it's, um, uh, you know, as Shafir was saying, that maybe uh, some of the Scandinavian countries have got a, a better grasp mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. perhaps, but uh, they certainly pay a high tax on mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. We've basically got uh, more of an economical model, haven't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. But um, it's certainly sufficient most of the time. There's always mm -hmm. going to be deficiencies. I mm -hmm. imagine that's uh, a matter of... Um, you know, clarifying various points and making sure everyone is covered. But so, who else do we know? New group of world servers. Well, yes, I mean the um, uh, as I mentioned, the suffrage uh, people and that sort of thing. But I mean, I look at even um, the people um, like Rutherford, for example, head of his field. All right, he developed something that was. Uh, meant to happen, I suppose, on every planet. They develop atomic energy and that sort of thing. We've made a few slip-ups there. We've made a few stuff-ups and developed nuclear energy. And uh, But it is a, it's, I see it as likely as a stage of development of humanity. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. we've got to go through it, work out what's best, what's going to work, how we can stop blowing ourselves up. Mm -hmm. And it's a step in the progress of our understanding of atomic nature Mm -hmm. and we're all made up of atomic um, atoms you know like I mean it's just part of our uh, who we are mm -hmm. and so it's part of our knowledge that we need to get through and we've had some great scientific people that have worked um, come through with various breakthroughs and that sort of thing they've not been seeking um, you know personality um, acknowledgement necessarily mm. they've been doing it there for the good of humanity. Is that degree of altruism? Mm. Yes, there is. Yes, it's fantastic. It's just, um, um, you know, part of the, um, of the spirit, I suppose, of the, um, of the group of world servers. So would you think Jacinda Ardern is a new world server? I think she is. Yes, I yeah. do. Yes, mm -hmm. she's, um, has the best of, uh, you know, um, looking out for the best in, in our society isn't she she's trying to do the best she can for 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 for, for, more. for everyone yes for yes. everyone yeah. yes. and yeah. certainly has that inclusive model yes mm. yeah yes i mean it's hard to sort of say that you know you don't like what she's doing <laughs> because um you know she is a caring sort of person and um, very much um 
wanting to have the best for everyone. And uh, It's interesting sitting in New Zealand that, that the model that we get shown of politicians is primarily of that old school. Mm-hmm. So we get shown lots about Trump, lots about Bolsonaro. We get shown uh, lots about Boris Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're not seeing the other model so much through our media. I'm not sure if that's a media issue or, or as if the leadership hasn't arisen. Well, I think there has. Countries. I think there's a lot of young you know, female female yeah. um, leaders around the mm-hmm. world. Um, I think there's about six of them now, isn't mm-hmm. it? Greenland and Ukraine and, mm-hmm. you know, that, that are yeah. all very forward thinking, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and this inclusive But we don't is, hear mm-hmm. about them enough. Yeah. As, you know, yeah. Yes, well, I mean, I see even in the Pentagon, for example, which is um, <laughs> a sort of a, um, a disastrous um, sort of thing, but there's three women running various departments, mm-hmm. uh, the top departments in the Pentagon now. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully we can see a bit of a change in um, let's not go and bash everyone you know mm. over the head no. uh, let's try and negotiate let's mm-hmm. um, try and um, do things a bit differently yeah. yes yeah. so um, no I think that um, the ideas even of the clean green world are brought in by people behind the scenes it's not just one people it's not just um, no um, our lovely Swedish young lass, but um, yeah. you know, there's it's, it's been a momentum that's been going, and the green parties all around the world have been mm. putting this forward for many years, haven't they? They have, yes. Yes, yeah. and uh, even the the whale chasers, the mm. uh, you know, they've been trying to mm. get things changed mm. and put their lives in risk, uh, you know, to, to do to do that. But really, the, I was looking at the rules for becoming part of the group of New World Servers. And firstly, it's harmlessness. Mm-hmm. And harmlessness is one ah. we've talked about before yeah. at yeah. various times. Mm-hmm. And it's a wee bit hard to define, but, you know, it just means that we're not creating chaos wherever we go. We're sort mm-hmm. of um, deciding definitely that we will... Um, you know, not put the personality ahead, but more the altruistic side Mm -hmm. of things, don't you think? I guess it's one of those things too, where you have to run a ruler over your life and say, I'm mostly harmless. (laughs) There are times when I'm a little harmful. Yes, that's right. Uh, Are we striving for perfection to get into this club or or we're able to say, most of the time I seem to be getting it. Yes, well, that's right. I mean, even 51% is possibly a good number. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but the next thing really is a desire nothing for the self. Yes. It's selflessness mm-hmm. that we're talking mm-hmm. about. And these people like um, Nurse Maud and those didn't give a thought about themselves. They no. just did what was needed. needed they to were be done. Yeah. so impassioned, I suppose, with the idea of helping somebody survive or, or mm. get over their illness or yeah. their pregnancy or, you know, whatever yeah. it was, yeah. she was there helping them. And uh, also, the third thing is looking for signs of divinity in all. In other words, we're all part of the one Mm -hmm. family. We're all part of humanity. We're part of God, Mm -hmm. whatever. You know, whichever way people people bring it about, Mm -hmm. this is how they determine it, isn't it? That sort of the divinity is really what you make it. Yes, we're all children of God. So harmlessness, selflessness, and expressing divinity or recognizing yeah. divinity? Expressing Both. divinity, but looking at, seeing everything as in as a divine in all. Yeah. Yes, seeing God in whatever, you know, yeah. or brotherhood, or, you know, as I say, we can call it what we like. And um, the personnel of this group, of course, is known only to the elder brothers, but it can be distinguished by their freedom of a critical spirit. So mm. criticism is not in their makeup. Ooh. Yes. And so we're all guilty of being critical about everything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I certainly don't exclude myself from this uh, category. But, you know, it's something we've got, to, over here. <laughs> we've, got, we've got to work on. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's yep. the lack of criticism that oh, actually... Yes sets people on the right path if you like i saw dk said um that sort of like criti- you know is criticism isn't a lack of seeing limitation in others it's it's actually 
when you see it is that you don't make it into anything big or you don't sort of, you know, you, you, you accept it and try and help them through it. You I know. will observe without condemnation. That's right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So anyway, the, the brain has to be telepathically sensitive in two directions, the will, or, you know, at will. It has to be able to see the mundane, the world of man, if you like, and the world of souls. Yes. In other words, we need to be able to... Be in both worlds. Be aware of both. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And, um, you know, that uh, lovely man from uh, Swedenborg uh, mm -hmm. was, you know, a typical example of that. Yeah. And um, had a fantastic um, input, I suppose. There's a whole society built up around Swedenborg. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, he was... for. 27 years, I think he was on the, I could see both sides. Right? Yes. The spiritual side and the material side as well. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, that's about what what we've got from me. Well, I, yes. The research I did placed me clearly in this group, but listening to Peter Nair, I think I failed about <laughs> So I'm clearly out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough group to be in. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, it is. is tough. Yeah. Mm. So if you think that you might be part of the group of World Service, maybe you could think about meditation, having vision for the future, inclusiveness, detachment, love, harmlessness, and service without recognition or ambition. Wow. Still not in. <laughs> So that's all from us today. Thank you. <laughs>